Hello and welcome to this uh, video series about chapter 8. Chapter 8 aggregate planning in the supply chain. Uh, my name is uh, Frank Evers and in this video series uh, I'm going to walk you through chapter 8. Um, as mentioned earlier all the theory in the book will be examined and in this uh, series we're only crossing the highlights of uh, chapter 8 so to help you study. Uh, what are we going to do? Um, the learning objectives. The first, identify the decisions that are best solved by aggregate planning. The second, understand the importance of aggregate planning as a supply chain activity. The third one, describe the information needed to produce an aggregate plan. That's actually a very um, short learning objective, it's, uh, it's just a list. Fourth one, uh, explain the basic trade-offs to consider when creating an aggregate plan. Uh, the fourth um, learning objective is a bit more uh, complicated, it tells you about um, uh, linear planning, uh, linear programming as, an, uh, as a methodology to uh, use in aggregate planning. Uh, the last one is formulate and solve basic aggregate planning problems using Microsoft Excel. Um, on, the, um, on the learning environment I've uploaded uh, Microsoft Excel files for you to solve uh, some uh, some um, uh, some uh, some problems. You can also use that in your uh, in your companies when you want to use um, uh, the theory from this uh, this chapter. So first, what are uh, the first uh, thing we like to explain is the role of aggregate planning in the supply chain. Um, when we have um, in, the, uh, in the best situation, we have uh, no lead times, we have uh, unlimited capacity, we have um, um, uh, uh, when a customer wants to, wants to uh, receive a product, the product is instantly uh, produced and instantly delivered. In that kind of situation we do not need to have planning. But uh, lead times are often long, can be long, and also production uh, times can vary over time. Um, and also in the supply chain you got uh, on the front end you got the customer, and the retailer, the distributor, manufacturer, and as the first part, we got the supplier. And during all those steps, you got lead times, you got inventory, you got production times or distribution times. And because we uh, don't exactly know when the customer comes in to put in his order, we have to plan for that. Um, as mentioned in the first uh, chapter, you got a push uh, system and a pull system, and at one time in the uh, in the series of uh, supplier ultimately to consumer, you got the push pull, pull boundary, and to that uh, push pull boundary, you have to plan. You you plan the push steps to the supply chain. Um, that's, what we, that's, what we, that's what we like to do. And if we want to make an aggregate planning, we make an aggregate planning um, best for all the five steps in the supply chain. From supplier, uh, manufacturer, distributor, uh, retailer and consumer. And uh, what we like to achieve is uh, profit uh, maximization. That's what we like to achieve. 
And with profit uh, maximization, you could also translate that into cost minimization. So we like to, um, to have cost, minimal cost, and that's also what we are doing in uh, the linear programming in uh, some videos from now. Um, when we like to uh, produce an aggregate planning, it's best to do that over some time, uh, 3 to 18 uh, months, and it's important to establish the, the period, if it is weeks or if it is months or if it is quarters. You can all use those, uh, those things. Um, when, um, when we use aggregate uh, planning, it's important that you know uh, all those uh, s seven uh, operational factors, all those seven operational parameters, huh? and um, the uh, the most important or the most uh, a very important thing is the backlog thing. Uh, do you want uh, your consumers to have um, instant delivery when they, uh, when they demand the product? Because it has to do with service, service level. If you say we want to have a service level of, let's say, uh, 95% and 5% of the times the customer can get into a backlog so they, the product gets delivered in a week or two weeks or three weeks from the time he puts in his order. So if you uh, want to create a backlog, then you're also implicitly saying that your service level is less than 100%. 100% of course is not... Um, um, is not uh, achievable, but then it is less as 100%. And um, it is uh, important for all these operational factors to have that, um, to discuss that with all the stages in the supply chain, so from consumer on the one hand to supplier on the other hand. Um, so what, what is the uh, problem we like to solve? Um, the book tells us that the problem is given the demand forecast for each period in the planning horizon, determine the production level, inventory level and capacity level for each period that maximizes the firm's supply chain profit over time in the planning horizon. So, what uh, we are uh, trying to do is you establish the planning horizon, you determine production level, one, inventory, two, capacity, three. Those three things you like, um, uh, uh, we like to, to establish. Uh, please uh, keep those three things in mind because that's also important for the strategies we are um, uh, crossing in some uh, in some time from now. Um, what's also important is the demand forecast. Demand forecast we crossed in uh, chapter seven. In chapter seven, we established some methodologies to um, uh, to come up with uh, forecasting. Uh, you got. Uh, different methodologies for demand forecast, so chapter 7 is very much intertwined into chapter 8. And as also chapter 9 is, but we cross that later on. Um, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the, the planning uh, problem. Um, as said earlier, a learning objective is all the information needed for the aggregate plan. The aggregate plan is a plan on an, uh, not on stock keeping unit level but more on an aggregate level of product and product families. And what do we uh, need from uh, your own company? 
in the supply chain, but also from the other companies in that supply chain supplying uh, the whole product family. Those uh, things are uh, the following. We need to establish the uh, production cost, let's say the labor cost in regular time, one, and the labor cost in overtime, two. Uh, we need to know, uh, do you want subcontractors or do you, um, uh, 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 do you not want to uh, have the opportunity to use subcontractors? That's two. Um, the third one is the cost of changing in uh, capacity. So if you want to um, increase your capacity of the uh, machines you got or increase the capacity of your labor force, what's the uh, cost of hiring and what's the cost of laying off? And um, what's the cost of uh, labor or in uh, respect of um, machines, what's the cost of uh, machines required for one unit, so one for one unit in that uh, product, uh, in that product family. The inventory holding cost, we crossed the inventory uh, cost earlier and that was in uh, chapter one, so if you're not totally familiar with the inventory cost, please refer to the uh, videos about chapter one. Um, the cost of stock out and backlog, we uh, crossed that earlier on the earlier slide. And the constraints. The constraints are very, very important as we are using linear programming to solve um, uh, this uh, problem. We need to know what constraints us in having the, uh, uh, the least cost or in other terms maximum profit. We need to know what is the maximum amount of overtime do we want to have layoffs and if we want, how much layoffs uh, uh, do we want? Because um, it can very well be that your uh, labor force has a permanent and a flexible pool. So then only the flexible pool is uh, eligible for layoffs and the permanent pool not. That's what you establish here. As a company, you always have uh, capacity available for you. The capacity of uh, the capital you establish here. So that's the, the, the total amount of capital uh, resources available at the disposal of your company. Third one, fourth one is, uh, do we want stock outs? And the fifth one is, do we want uh, backlogs and if we want them, how much do we want them? That's always also related to service level, service level agreements if you uh, if you got that. And that's all related to the other suppliers. These uh, things are very important when we like to um, establish a solution for an aggregate plan over the whole supply chain. Um, so what um, if we solve the problem? What is the thing what we like to? Uh, what is the thing that comes out of our aggregate plan? In other words, what are the outputs? The outputs are the production uh, quantity in regular time one, the production quantity in overtime two the production quantity in subcontracted time. Um, again, overtime and subcontracted time is time that you, um, if you want it, you can, but if your company has the, um, has the, the, uh, the, has the rules and regulations that they do not want overtime and or they do not want um, subcontracts, you can establish it also. Um, it's for the inventory held 
and uh, inventory is uh, very important because uh, in some uh, product families you can have inventory in some uh, product families it's um, uh, not feasible to have inventories uh, because inventory costs can be very high or your product cannot be inventorized uh, because your um, your product um, has a limited uh, uh, lifetime for example with dairy products um, the uh, backlog and stock out uh, quantity is also an output of the aggregate plan and the machine capacity um, so the machine uh, um, uh, total capacity in uh, in your uh, machine park and the increase and decrease in it please do not um, uh, please do not read a machine utilization because that is not what we're uh, what the output of the aggregate plan is um, aggregate uh, plan in the supply chain from on the one hand um, uh, supplier manufacturer distributor retailer all the way to consumer is very important very important to maximize your uh, the profit in the whole supply chain because that's the objective of supply chain management that's the objective of what we're here for and if you plan uh, less well or if you even plan poorly your uh, your aggregate plan that will result in uh, the lost in sales profits excess capacity excess capacity itself is not bad but the cost related to excess capacity is and also excess capacity excess capacity itself is not bad but the cost incurred in excess capacity is um, um, in, an, uh, in an aggregate plan it is important to establish the, um, the aggregation level you want to use for your uh, for your planning because you cannot uh, it's less uh, useful to use the uh, stock keeping unit the SKU uh, level because that change over time very much so it's better to use a product uh, family so several products into one family and then you plan on the product family level because that um, uh, is less uh, tends to be less, less flexible over time and uh, better, uh, uh, better planable over time. And it is, um, if, if you can, it's best to focus on uh, the bottlenecks, on the bottleneck and the bottleneck uh, in, your, uh, in your supply chain because that is where the production holds.